segment, but we not only want to compete, we want to win. And we knew that we weren't going to win if we tried to take an existing vehicle like the CTS and downsize it or take mass out of it. Um, that would be a very tough task, or to take an existing hardware set and try and grow it to be a compact luxury segment vehicle. Um, that wouldn't give us the winning formula we needed, so we started from scratch. We have all of the lessons learned from our CTS, which is quite successful, but very little of the hardware. It's new from bumper to bumper. This vehicle is about 500 pounds lighter than the current CTS, so if you want a reference, that's where it's at. It's also, we believe, lighter than everything else in the segment. We're going to show you some, some data. Basically, the base car comes in at 3,315 pounds. And that is tough to do. But it was done with complete vehicle work from bumper to bumper. And David's going to take you into more detail there. This vehicle comes with three engines, two brand new engines, a 2.5 liter four cylinder at 202 horsepower, a two liter turbo engine at 272 horsepower, and then our 3.6 at 321 horsepower. Both four cylinders have estimated uh, fuel economy of 22 city, 32 highway. So you move up from the base to the two liter turbo engine, you sacrifice no fuel economy, but you gain incredible horsepower and driving performance. At, with a 2.0 liter engine, the turbo, it's actually one of the most power dense engines in the industry at 136 horsepower per liter. That is really an achievement. And this vehicle is extremely fun and engaging to drive. You're going to get to see it again in just a few minutes. But I'm going to let Dave talk to you about what we did in the vehicle to take the mass out and where the efficiency came from. And uh, we'll go from there. David? Okay. Thanks. So when, when we uh, uh, got the green light to, to start to work on this program, uh, it was actually about five years ago. And uh, we spent a good two years working on uh, understanding the market, understanding our buyers, and also starting to do a lot of development work and design work on many of the architectural elements that we have in the car here. And that was even before we began uh, doing some of the styling work uh, for the program. And the reason uh, we did that is we knew it was a major commitment, uh, not just by those of us working on it, but our leadership to enable us to do that uh, so that we could actually have time to get the fundamentals of this car right. And, and it, took, it took time to be able to do that. We studied every one of the competitors. We tore them down. We actually went and we did clinic work uh, both in China, Europe, and North America with uh, owners of our competitive vehicles so that we learned from them as well what their likes and interests are, etc. Uh, and um, I think we talked, uh, Don talked about uh, that there's really kind of two, two groups of people, some, some that are moving up in, in uh, uh, and maybe for the first time being able to afford luxury, and others that are already uh, there, they've made it, uh, and they understand that the size of the car and the mass of the car and all of that is going to give them a more fun to drive uh, experience. And so that's where we really focused on the architecture. We actually changed a lot of some of our own best practices within GM, and it took us a while to, to work through some of that. Uh, Many of the fasteners that we have in the uh, suspension area, uh, we actually downed uh, sized one, one size. So as an example, in the front suspension, uh, those uh, control arm, uh, we went from 14 millimeters to uh, 12 millimeters, just to save 196 grams. Uh, and so it, just as a, an example of the extent that we went to in order to save mass uh, and control the vehicle to be get, able to get to that end goal of, of fun to drive. Uh, we worked on the efficiencies of the design so that we line, we, we bolted the suspension uh, right where the body structure is to be able to make sure that it's as efficient a design as possible. Uh, even some of the body structure elements are very small and they have lightning holes throughout them. And the whole reason was to uh, take mass out and get to the goal of, of uh, fun to drive. As we, we uh, walked through the car, we, we ended up uh, doing a lot of underbody aero work uh, so we could get great fuel economy, so the customers will appreciate that, uh, including working uh, the downforce of the, of the car to make sure that the vehicle was, was even at speed, was held down to the, to the ground uh, and uh, could, could provide that really solid, uh, predictable feel in the steering wheel. 
uh, a lot of extensive use of aluminum, uh, you know, cross members, transmission, engine blocks. We even have magnesium uh, engine mount brackets uh, to be able to uh, save some mass. Um, aluminum extensively throughout the, the vehicle. And then we even uh, went after some of the right key suppliers uh, in our components to make this car uh, fun to drive. So we have a ZF steering gear. Uh, we know uh, that they do very well with the precision and the friction in the steering system that, that they provide. We spec that out. Brembo brakes uh, are available on the car as well. And that helps you so that you almost feel the road as you are braking uh, and, and it also adds to that, that fun to drive. And it all worked even into uh, the body structure work that we did, as well as the chassis. All of that was interactive and in, in, uh, to try and make sure that we could be as efficient as we, we could be. We did a lot of, even in the chassis, as well as the body, um, I would describe it as a lot of smart material selection uh, to be able to have the materials that perform the kind of function they need to, but at the same time can be as light as, as they are. They are. So as an example, we have uh, press hardened steel in some of the areas where for side impact or crash readiness, it's very important to have really, really high strength steel uh, to be able to protect that safety cage area. And advanced, we have advanced uh, high strength steels uh, in the front as well, both in the front rails, rear rails, and other places uh, to be able to manage uh, crash loads and things like that. And then you can even see, to some of the extents that we've been to, we scalloped uh, even the uh, weld flanges in between here, and that was all to try and get at uh, reducing mass. We saved in the neighborhood of three to 4,000 grams just in the area of adding some lightning holes and uh, being able to uh, scalp the flanges. So all that combined gets us to the performance that you'll be able to uh, get a little appreciation for later on today when uh, after lunch I think we'll go for a, go for a ride. So uh, we're, th we're thrilled uh, to be able to uh, uh, first of all, been given the opportunity to, to do this this program, the time to do it, and to do it in all the fundamentals in the car uh, very, very well. And now we're excited to be able to uh, let people experience it. And as uh, Don said, uh, have you tell us what you think and, and whether we've achieved our goal. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. Uh, all right, so that's uh, you can tell there's a lot going on here. <laughs> so any areas that you guys want to explore, design, queue, Engineering, we got the guys that architected the car here. Uh, one thing I'd mention is we even got some some new tech in the XTS, the bigger car, ATS, uh, this car, really built for traffic. Even the traffic that you guys have every day in this town, which which is not great. <laughs> well, like adaptive cruise uh, that can take you all the way to a full stop, leave your cruise on, and then resume in a consistent following distance with the cars in front of you. We have what's called a safety alert seat uh, for lane departure warnings. You guys have probably experienced those on other cars or uh, any kind of obstacle detection. Uh, we'll, instead of flashing lights at you or beeping at you, which we're all, we're all accustomed to ignoring certain uh, inputs that we get uh, on a daily basis. So what we've done in the seat is we'll pulse your seat. So if there are that obstacles on the left, we'll pulse the left side of your seat, uh, which is kind of a cool, like, discreet, my wife won't yell at me, you know, because only I got the <laughs> right, message, right, you know. Right. Uh, <laughs> my daughter's okay, you know, so she doesn't have to worry about it. But I know exactly, not only that there's an obstacle, but where it is. Uh, so some cool technologies, too, that are in both the new uh, cars coming out this summer, including this one, that we even think are particularly interesting uh, for, you know, people in a place like Los Angeles, Atlanta, D.C., where, where uh, the kind of urban and suburban traffic flow is a major daily uh, event. So anyway, that, those are kind of the basics. We invite you guys to just kind of choose your own adventure here, engage any of the guys on the team. Lunch is right behind the curtain here. Cars are out front, obviously. So why not, I think, uh, right, Nikidra, we ought to probably go in and encourage people to have a seat and get something to eat.